Hi, something a little different now. Um, I'm going to talk about some of the interesting people that have been through the studio over the years. Um, I've had permission off everybody, so not a problem. Uh, first one I'd like to start with is uh, a guy called Harry Gregg. And Harry, God love him, um, came down the path. This is many years ago now. I'm going back probably what, 20 years ago. Um, he was an interesting character. Came down the path <clears throat> 20 years ago. Came to the door, rang the bell, came out and he said, Are you the young man? God bless him. Are you the young man who does the guitar lessons? Sign was on the window. Yes, I am. Okay. He said, I've asked around and everybody says that I've got two hands that you can teach me. No pressure there then. I said, well, we can try, can't we? I should explain to you at the time, Harry was 78. Um... So, all of a sudden, this guy takes his hands out of his pockets. He said, what can you do with these? <sighs> right, his left, he was right-handed. His left hand was absolutely crippled with rheumatoid arthritis. If I said that it was golf balls, literally, where his knuckles were, I wouldn't be exaggerating. Took one look at him and thinking, why do you say these things? I said, we can give it a go. <clears throat> so... Harry starts lessons. If I said it took us nearly six months to get some mobility into his hands um, and get him playing anything in the way of tabs and things like that, I wouldn't be exaggerating. Um, Harry turned out to be one of the sweetest guys you could ever wish to meet in your life. Um, and he lived in the sheltered housing in Pinewood Avenue. Um, so, he's coming along. And the next thing was, <clears throat> he starts playing. So... I start keeping an eye on him now because his only daughter, Hi Sal, lives in Southampton. Um, and he's that's the only family he had locally. So when I was going to the sh to Asda or anything like that, knock on the door, as H, is there anything you need? I used to call him H. Is there anything you need? And he used to say, always come back with yes, son, or no, son, son. Um, I'm okay. All right. So one Christmas, called in. Uh, and noticed that the TV was missing. So I turned round and I was thinking to myself, I wonder if he's fell on hard times and he's had to sell the TV to pay the bills and things. So I thought, I'll risk my arm and I will phone Sally. So I phoned Sally and she said to me, um, oh, I, I, I asked her, I said, please don't think that I'm prying or anything, but is your dad struggling money-wise? And she said, why did you say that? I said, because the TV is gone. She said, go and ask him where the TV is, Mike. So I thought, should I or shouldn't I? So on his next lesson, I came in and said, H, please, please, whatever you do, don't think that I'm interfering or prying into your personal life, but where's the TV? He said, you're a nosy bugger. I hope we can get away with that. Um, and next time you come to the house, I'll show you. It's okay. Uh, he always used to play on this guitar that was like really slim neck um, uh, because it was easy for his hands and things. Okay, so I literally said, come down. So I went down, knocked on the door, goes into the front room, and he says, right, you wanted to know where the TV was? And I said, well, where is it? And he said, because I've sold it. I said, well, why have you done that? And he says, A, I don't watch it because I'm playing guitar all the time. I'm now feeling about one inch tall. And B, I bought myself this. And I looked over and on the, on the sofa was a Gibson case. And I thought, by this time I'm thinking, how do I get my foot out of my mouth? And he opened up the case and in there was an absolutely gorgeous Gibson L5 CES. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know what it is, it's like a big arch top jazz guitar and they usually cost an arm and a leg. They're a expensive so he turned around and said now you know where the telly's gone don't you so i thought okay fine i phoned sally back and said you could have warned me she said um no i didn't want to spoil his fun i said okay thank you she said but thank you for caring for him i said not at all i just wanted to make sure he was okay so the next thing was um harry i introduced him to a gentleman at the top of normanby drive um, he was also a widower, I should have said Harry was a widower, uh, a widower, um, who was in, picture the scene now, Harry's now 79, I think, or maybe even 80 at that time, 
and he's playing really, really well. Um, for somebody who's only been playing two years and had the problems that he had, um, I've been together and he said, uh, I've started practicing now every Wednesday at 12 o'clock, so you'll be able to keep an eye out for me, won't you? And I swear, every day you could see him going past my studio window with a guitar case in one hand and a bottle of scotch in the other at 12 o'clock. And he used to go up the road. Um, I won't tell you the gentleman's name, so I've got permission off him, but the, up to the gentleman's house at the top of Normanby Drive. He'd go and get the cheese and biscuits. Harry had um, has got the whiskey, and they'd sit there for eight, nine, ten hours, uh, literally, until Harry would go back. And then what he'd do is he'd phone me, and he'd just turn and said, I'm ready to go home now. So he used to go and pick him up and take him back to his house to make sure he got home okay. Um, had he died about four years ago, and I miss him a lot. He was amazing. Um, just to show you what you can do, this guy's hands, there was no way on God's earth that he should have been able to play and through his hard work and a little bit of help from this place, he got playing. Right. I'll leave it there. Thanks very much. See you again. Stay safe.